Mortal Online is a difficult game to play, and at the very beginning can be overwhelming. What to do and where to start. The forms provide bits of information, and they're often scattered all over the place. Yet it can still be difficult to find any specific help. This video series is meant as a guide, explaining game mechanics and features which a new player might not know exist, or that he will rarely experience. The first step in any RPG is to create a character. While Malta Online doesn't have any traditional classes in which to get stuck in for the rest of your character's life, it is still important to decide carefully what the character will do in the future, as all of the ancestries have different stat caps. While it doesn't take long to level all the stats to maximum, you will still be limited by those caps determined by your chosen ancestry. Certain races are naturally positioned to be superior fighters, while others possess a higher intellect. First, a player must choose the clade, the species from which the character comes. Each one has its own unique lore, as well as the location where its culture is centered within Mirland. After a clade has been picked, the player must select his ancestry, essentially the subspecies of his character's parents. One of the parents will determine the primary race, while the second will provide a change to the stat caps, as well as to the appearance of the character. Before the card flux, many Hyrgar lived above ground, although they were never once to mingle easily with the other races of Nave. When their alliance with the Trindebic Empire fractured, most Hyrgar families chose to withdraw from the outside world to the safety and seclusion of their stronghold, Gal Barak, deep within the Talus Mountains. Their small stature, dense bone structure, and heavy physique suit their nature as cave dwellers, or perhaps a result of it. Centuries of exposure to Ica has both blessed them and cursed them. Their tough reddish skin and acceptable night vision come at the cost of skin disease and light sensitivity. Human societies perceive them as introverted, but their sense of logic is unmatched. The Blaine race is the youngest of the Agmar clade. At some point in history, they separated from the Hyrgar ancestors and settled in the cold mountains of Nordveld, merging their lives and culture with the native Kalods. As centuries passed and their use of Eker declined, they began to change and adapt to their new climate and lifestyle. They have not completely abandoned their origins though, and prefer to live in mountainous regions with rich ore and sturdy housing. The Viva and Shivra of the Alverine Clade have lived on the remote continent of Ermathar for as long as history recalls, although the name actually means New Jungle Lands. Aside from a few feudal attempts by the Trindermic Empire to colonize the land, contacts between the Vila and human civilizations have been sporadic as best. The Shivra have a settlement in Toxai in Merland, but except for their relations with the Curates, they have very little to do with the human races. The Vila live as hunters and gatherers, and generally group in complex patterns of a non-permanent tribes. The tribes often have an underground counterpart among the Shivra, their animistic society revolves around fearing and controlling Anam, the spirits of nature who are believed to be present in all things. The Vila are known for their power to shape organic things. However, the constituents of this ability remain a mystery to most outsiders. Because of their nomadic culture and exotic visage, many scholars consider them to be primitive, and human civilizations tend to regard them with suspicion and sometimes fear. Many Shivra have abandoned the nomadic lifestyle of the Vila and now live in permanent, sophisticated cave complexes. But like the Vila, they are an animistic society which fears and seeks to control Anam. They are similarly known for their powers to shape inorganic matter. And just like the Vila, this process is a mystery to most non Shivra. And also like the Vila, they are regarded with suspicion by humans, although their skills in stone and gem crafting are highly valued. The Trindamines are renowned for their history as conquerors. Before the Cod Flux, the Trindamic Empire dominated large parts of the known world, with outposts in every corner of the realm. Those days of glory are over, but the Trindamines still regard themselves as the finest, most advanced civilization in the world. Their rich nutritional resources available in a comfortable climate have coupled with the high standard of living in a well-developed society leading to the Trinomic bloodline which favors intellectual superiority over lesser physical traits. The ancient Curates have long endured as nomadic hunters and herdsmen, living closely with their herds, 
as they are among the best horsemen in the world. These fierce nomadic people identify themselves by tribe rather than race. And the tribal wars are common. At some point deep in the mists of prehistory, one of Nade's continents sank into the ocean, carrying with it the entire Shinarian civilization. Today, only their slave race, the Sidonians, remain. They have long roamed the earth searching for remnants of their former master's knowledge. The meticulous dogmas of Sidonian society have resulted in a racial inclination toward logic, reasoning, and sagacity. Despite their intellectual skills, they are powerful people who value raw strength and endurance over physical agility. Throughout history, the Kalids and Blains have been allies. The two races live together in relatively anonymous clans, ruled by Hovdegs, which are a part of lower regions called Ains. Important decisions are made in assemblies called Tinks, where every free man has the right to vote. The harsh conditions of this northern realm have fostered a tall and physically strong race in the Kalids. Though not as physically or mentally dexterous as other races, they have a strength of will that is unmatched. Below the equator to the southwest lies the arid desert covered continent of Sarduka. Scattered among the sands are the lush oases which provide homes for the Sardukan people. In the past, the Sardukans have withstood incursions by both Trimidines and Kalids, but the nations are now at peace. Cultural wisdom teaches that the desert is a living entity, and the Sardukans easily accept many of the strange phenomena that can be found among its dunes. These mythos have shaped the Sardukans' natural affinity for philosophy and magic, traits which are molded by a powerful Magi priesthood. The product of the tragic union between Risa and Humeth, the hybrid Thursa are the offspring of crimes committed in the wake of battle. Mothers of both races frequently abandoned their bastard children to be raised in squalor and exploited as slaves. The Thursa possess traits that have exceeded both of their races of origin. From the Risa they inherit strength and fortitude which are enhanced by human intelligence. Their naturally quick healing enables them to survive their youth and hone their reflexes and cunning to a fearsome level. Let's now take a look at your character's stats. Strength determines the maximum weight you can carry, both in armor and your inventory, as well as maximum stamina. It also determines how much stamina is drained by weapons and how fast a character can draw a bow. Dexterity determines the run speed and maximum stamina. Intelligence directly influences the amount of mana, as well as giving additional benefits such as increased defense against thieving. Constitution increases hits points, carry weight, movement speed, and stamina. Psych governs mana and maximum cow, the energy used when manifesting in the ether world, and magic resistance. Size gives bonuses to damage after a certain strength threshold is reached, and increases the amount of hit points a character has. At this point in time, size is the second stat after age that cannot be increased or decreased after the character has been created. However, there are plans to add ways in which you can decrease or increase your size. One thing that must be kept in mind is that each of these stats, while perhaps not immediately having a good use, act as bonuses to skills, and even increase some skills effectiveness. It's generally a good idea to have your highest stats be parents of the skills that you plan to use the most. It is the skills that you choose that determine what your character is. The last thing that has to be chosen in the character creation screen is the starting location. Generally speaking, there is no best starting location. However, Galcor and Kranesh are poor choices for a new character, since they do not have any gods and as such a new character is not expected to survive long in these two cities. Each starting location has its bonuses and negatives, meaning that some cities might have good hunting grounds but don't have a lot of extracting or refining equipment. Upon creation, the first player of the account will have a fledging flag, which protects him from receiving damage from other players and prevents anyone stealing from him. Enemy criminal action, however, will turn the player gray, losing for him all the benefits of the fledging flag for the duration of the gray flag. 